like a mirage rising out of the desert. This is a World Cup fan village nestled next to Doha's International Airport. Row after row of shipping containers, servers, cabins, laid out across what was, until recently, a vast empty lot. 6,000 cabins in all can provide accommodation for up to 12,000 people. The cost, about $200 a night. Hind is from Morocco. She's just checking in. Welcome. The accommodation is good, it's clean, uh, which is like very good. Uh, we have AC uh, with this uh, like hot weather, it's uh, very useful. Amenities include restaurants as well as a small supermarket. There's an outdoor gym, football and futsal pitches and vast viewing areas for all the World Cup games. Everything is good here, atmosphere is nice, fans is having fun, atmosphere is very good. Football, enjoying the football, you know, enjoying the World Cup. The cabins were made in China and shipped over, designed so that workers can easily assemble them in just a few hours. The Chinese uh, manufacturers are like the giants in the manufacturing um, in terms of speed and in terms of, uh, you know, if you get the right quality control, uh, you will get a very good product for a good price and in, the, in a timely manner, which is very important for such event. Accommodation has been one of the key challenges for local organisers. Balancing the requirements needed to house fans during the World Cup while also then not being left with vast amounts of hotels and other accommodation that is simply not required. But there are plans in place to put the cabins to good use once the tournament finishes. With the support of the government on this project, um, they are going to uh, donate all of these units um, to, to the people in need, uh, whether in, uh, in need countries or refugee camps and so on. A mini city built for football fans, but with the potential for serving larger needs long term. Dan Williams, CGTN, Doha.